Video game bosses are designed to put all the player's skills to the test. You want them to be challenging, but you also want them to fight fair. And sometimes they just have that one move that's insanely overpowered that leaves us fans absolutely raging at the screen. So with that in mind, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game boss attacks that were utter BS. Number 10, Gil's Full Regeneration, Street Fighter 3. At the very end of Street Fighter 3, you must battle a godlike cult leader called Gil. No relation to our very own Julian though, or at least not that I know of. Like any cheap boss, he dominates the fight with devastating combos, ridiculous super arts moves, and cancelling attacks. But the worst thing about this dreaded demagogue is his ability to resurrect himself. See, if Gil is defeated while his super art gauge is full, he will automatically regain all of his health, meaning that you have to fight him all over again. And he instinctively pushes you and your projectiles away as he rises, making it insanely difficult to interact interrupt his revival. Because it's nearly inconceivable to defeat Gil when he has two health bars, your best bet then is to let him use his super combo since it'll deplete his super arts gauge. But that's easier said than done, since Gil's super combos are ridiculously overpowered in and of themselves. See, if you perform something like Meteor Strike for instance, he can knock up to 80% off your health. And that's not even his strongest move. His seraphic wing blankets the entire screen with lethal energy, and it cannot be evaded or parried. As a result, it feels like you're in an unwinnable battle once Gil's super arts gauge is full, no matter what he does. Number 9, Chronicus Time Bending Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat bosses are infamous for their cheap tactics, and the final adversary of Mortal Kombat 11, Chronica, is no exception. This towering tyrant can summon asteroids, health depleting force fields, other combatants, and even a T Rex. But what makes Chronica so powerful is the fact that she's a chronomancer, meaning that time itself is her plaything. If she strikes you then with time energy, it will drain your health bar, freeze you in place, and move you right beside her, allowing her to unleash a devastating special or combo attack. Blocking isn't helpful either since she can shoot time energy around the arena, striking you from behind. She can also perform this move while you're in the middle of hitting her, cancelling your attack outright. She doesn't really telegraph this move in any way either, so there's no hint that it's coming until it's too late. She can also shoot a time sphere that spits out time energy in all directions, which is nearly impossible to dodge. Goro, Shang Tsung, and Shao Kahn may well be known for their unfair tactics, but none of these bosses hold a candle to Chronica. Number 8, Yellow Devils Transforming Mega Man. Since its inception, Mega Man has been renowned for its merciless difficulty. However, the franchise has never devised a more strenuous boss battle than the Yellow Devil, who debuted in the first game. See, throughout the battle, the giant automaton moves from one side of the room to the other by dismantling his body piece by piece. Unfortunately, the devil's block shifts so swiftly that you need to have the reflexes of a fly to stand a chance against him. Just to make things worse as well, there is some serious lag during this bout, making it nearly impossible to time your jumps correctly. Although Yellow Devil has appeared in a dozen games, his attack pattern is slower in later entries to make his difficulty a bit more reasonable. As a result, the original Yellow Devil is the hardest incarnation, as well as one of the most frustrating boss battles in all of gaming. Number 7, Bad Girl Sneak Attack. No More Heroes. Throughout No More Heroes, you battle an eclectic horde of contract killers, including a karaoke gunslinger, a supervillain postman, and an old lady with a shopping trolley. Once you reach the last few assassins, though, you expect to square off against the worst of the worst. However, with her frilly dress and white stockings, you wouldn't probably expect to encounter such an innocuous looking foe so late in the game. However, Bad Girl uses her supposed innocence against you, and that's because when she has sustained heavy damage, the young lass will drop to the ground crying. Because she appears vulnerable, it looks like you have the perfect opportunity for you to wail on her with your most powerful attacks. But if you approach Bad Girl at this point, she'll drag you to the ground and kill you instantly. As a result, it's wise to use this time to charge your weapon already an attack, waiting for her to get back to her feet. Even though this is a reasonably easy fight, everyone falls for Bad Girl's sneak attack the first time around. Number 6, Gruntilda's homing missiles, Banjo-Kazooie. In the final showdown, of Banjo-Kazooie, the Wicked Witch Gruntilda will use all sorts of spells and enchantments to defeat the titular duo. However, the Horrid Hag's most devastating move is also the simplest one, the plain old Fireball. And when you notice Gruntilda is shooting projectiles at your direct position, any player will probably assume that the best tactic is to run away. After all, there's no way the Fireballs can target your position if you keep moving, right? Well, then something very strange starts to happen. Even though you're 
moving at top speed, one of the fireballs suddenly hits you with pinpoint accuracy. Now at first, you might just assume that Gruntilda got a lucky shot in, but then another fireball smacks right into you, then another, and then another. It suddenly dawns on you that running away won't help at all. Based on how fast you're running and what direction you're moving in, Gruntilda can calculate exactly where Banjo and Kazooie are going to be at any given time, and hit them with a fireball with surgical precision. Because of this, the only safe way to dodge this attack is to swiftly change directions every time she hurls a projectile. Number 5, Ozma's Meteor Final Fantasy 9. Nearly every Final Fantasy has a secret super boss that is dramatically harder than the final one. As difficult as these enemies are though, you should be able to win if you memorize their strategies and prepare your party accordingly. However, there is next to nothing that you can do to prepare enough when you first confront Ozma in Final Fantasy 9. This swirling orb can drain your energy, compel your party to attack each other, or just instantly kill you. Ozma can also regenerate all of its health whenever the hell it wants, figuratively resetting the entire fight. What makes this boss so sneaky though is that it won't waste time on attacks that it knows your party is immune to. So if all your party members are immune to death and holy, Ozma will never use these spells and instead cast something like Meteor, which can kill everyone in one go. Because of this, equipping status protection skills tends to backfire since it encourages the boss to use its most powerful attacks. Even though strategy does play a big part in this battle then, the most important element that decides whether you win or lose is just dumb luck. Number 4, Nuclear Armadillo's Nuclear Explosion, Ninja Gaiden 2. Nuclear Armadillo may have a ridiculous name, but anyone who's played Ninja Gaiden 2 knows it's unwise to underestimate him. See, when his health bar is depleted, yes, it's another one of those, players naturally let their guard down, believing that the battle is over, that they won. But as the Nuclear Armadillo draws his last breath, he lives up to his namesake and he just blows up, incinerating everything in his vicinity to a crisp. And if you weren't ready for this explosion, it will just kill you immediately, forcing you to fight the armadillo all over again. Now, there are some players that don't think this last ditch attack is a big deal. I mean, after all, you can just deflect the explosion by blocking, can't you? Well, that is true, but not in the original game. In the first version of Ninja Gaiden 2, the only way to survive Nuclear Armadillo's final assault was to perform Reverse Wind, which requires precise timing. So many players complained about the difficulty of this boss that later editions of the game tweaked this fight so you can block Nuclear Armadillo's Hail Mary move. Number 3, Jubileus's Black Hole Bayonetta. Throughout Bayonetta, you must battle the endless forces of heaven and hell, and every time you defeat a boss, they warn you that you're only delaying the inevitable since you will ultimately be destroyed by the creator of the universe known as Jubileus. Even though this demonic deity is built up as the be-all and end-all over and over, Jubileus still surpasses all expectations in terms of how awe-inspiring and difficult she is. In this epic showdown, she warps reality, shoots missiles, and hits you with every element in existence. The fact that her ability to throw galaxies at you is one of her lesser attacks should give you an idea of just how powerful she is. However, the moment every player dreads is when she tosses a black hole at you, which can kill you in the blink of an eye. If you thought that you could just fly away from this destructive force too, it's not that simple, as Jubileus can also change Bayonetta into a child, stripping her of all her powers. So if this mighty godling de-ages you just before summoning a black hole, it's guaranteed that you'll be seeing the game over screen of very, very soon. Number two, Tiny Vermin's Poison Puddles. Hades. In Hades, you play as Zagreus, a demigod who attempts to escape the underworld to reunite with his mother on the surface. But because this terrain is hard as hell, literally and figuratively, you will die at the hands of demons, monsters, minotaurs, and hydras dozens of times before you reach the exit. As you traverse through the labyrinth-like Temple of Sticks, you might also stumble upon a room that harbors a teeny weeny rat called Tiny Vermin. Although Zagreus bursts out laughing at the prospect of battling such a household pest, he's soon learns that this creature is not to be trifled with. That's because every couple of seconds, this little critter summons giant rodents who keep spewing a poisonous goo. And if you make contact with any of these puddles, they'll sap your energy at astonishing speed. Because Tiny Vermin can conjure an endless supply of minions, you should focus on killing him ASAP. But if you neglect to kill the other rodents, they'll cover the whole room with draining puddles, causing you to lose health every time you take a step. So even if you defeat the Tiny 
tiny vermin, you will have so little health that your adventure will most certainly be cut short before reaching the surface. Number 1. Melania's Whirlwind Strikes, Elden Ring While the previous entries on this list all gave players some amount of grief, none have quite landed with the controller throwing thud of Elden Ring's Melania. By far the toughest boss in the game, it's telling that this two-phase swordstress is an optional challenge coming right at the end of the experience as she tests every single trick the player has learned previously. On paper, Melania pretty much has every element to make for a nightmare boss. A massive HP pool, two distinct phases, a flurry of fast hard hitting combos and also the ability to regain health. However, it's one combo in particular that has become the bane of every player's life. At certain points during the fight, Melania will leap into the air before unleashing a whirlwind of sword slashes that can track you all around the arena and are insanely tough to dodge and virtually impossible to block outright. Coming in distinct waves, even if you avoid the first flurry, the second and third are enough to kill you dead, forcing a restart. Even worse though, thanks to the boss regaining health every time she lands a blow, even on your shield, should you dodge and then block the attack, she's still going to come out the victor as the sheer amount of attacks in the combo means she'll transfer all of those blocked hits into more HP, extending the fight even further. So that's our list. I want to see what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about these bosses and these boss attacks? And are there any infuriating ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, can you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.